Hello, and thank you for joining us for another Press Row. We've got Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz, and I'm Matt Finkel to talk high school sports and basketball season for the boys. League openers this week. Which league game are you guys most looking forward to? Well, uh, it already happened. <laughs> yeah, that Tuesday Minus night. Yeah. St. John's was the one I was really looking forward to. Uh, you know, early season, it's hard to, to really get excited for a lot of matchups yet. We're not really sure if there's a lot of good teams or just a lot of bad teams, a lot of mediocre teams. So, uh, you know, maybe this weekend can define things a little bit, but, uh, you know, nothing's jumping out to me that's all that exciting to lead off. I, I'm going to beg to differ as far as a game for this Friday night, and that is Spencerville Lincoln View. There's been, you know, looking at this game, a big Northwest Conference showdown, and you look at the landscape of both these programs, they have, these two teams have battled each other throughout the years, have had very, very close games, and these group of seniors going back to the junior high, it's been nip and tuck. It's even matchups. You know, talking to Greg Leith, the athletic director at Lincoln View earlier this week about this. I mean, they, they are excited about this game. Uh, Lincoln View thinks they've got a really, really good squad. This could be a year that they could put something together in Division Four, especially in Division Four. now that you don't have to worry about Spencerville or Wayne Trace come tournament time as far as two stalwart programs. This could be the year that perhaps Lincoln View maybe puts a nice little tournament run. But first things first, a huge tournament or conference game that could have tournament-type atmosphere at the Barnyard, the new nickname for the uh, gym at uh, Lincoln View High School. I think that could be a dandy of a matchup. Well, and you, you look at the MAC where you still have several schools that aren't playing basketball yet. Marin Local and Coldwater coming off last week's uh, trip to the state tournament as well as Fort Recovery. I, I think the Western Buckeye League is the league I'm looking forward to the most on uh, this opening weekend cause just because I think there's so much intrigue in the Western Buckeye League this year where we'll finally start to get a little better idea of where the league's going to shake out, who's going to be where in that contest. A couple of new coaches in the league this year. So I think the, the WBL is what I'm most looking forward to this uh, weekend. Well, you know, and it's not a league game, and it's not Friday night, but Saturday OGLCC, I think, is one we always look forward to. And because we're not going to see that in the postseason. That's right. going to be weird. And we know LCC is good, and we're not quite sure what Ottawa Glandorf has. Can they rise to that level? Of course, T-Birds will be off on Friday night, so maybe an advantage there, maybe not. But it's not a league game, but I think that's the highlight of the weekend. I'm intrigued by OG's matchup Friday night with Bath. It right. seems Bath has right. really turned the corner since getting, for lack of a better term, belt sanded uh, in Friday night at the, uh, the tip-off. Mm -hmm. They responded well with a win over Elida the following night. They come back, get a win on the road convincingly. Last week they won by 17 or so uh, against Bluffton. So I think Bath is another one of those teams that remains to be seen. And OG you know, had a double weekend last weekend also. In the Western Buckeye League, for a different reason, Salina, Elida, both off to slow starts. I think that's an important league opener for both of those teams as well. And then in, you mentioned in the MAC mark, Minster St. Henry Friday night. That's Minster's opener, just like Lima Senior played a league game and against a very good team in their league in their opener. Minster has that challenge this week. So some interesting games, and we'll, we'll see how they play out Friday and Saturday. How about the football season? We're done with high school football for 2015. What are your final thoughts? What are your takeaways from 2015 with Coldwater and Fort Recovery claiming the D5 and D7 titles respectively? Well, you know, we touched on it last week, uh, just great excitement for Fort Recovery, a, a first state championship, and, and they did it fairly convincingly. Uh, to me, that, that's a highlight of the season. But also, you know, a salute to Coldwater as they, they keep their incredible streak going, of, of at least getting to the championship game and now winning another one. But, you know, we were so close to having the trifecta again. And Marion Local was getting ready to punch the ball in to go up 21-7. And really, we're about to about seemingly... About to go up 20, 20 yeah, yeah, in 20 the first nothing. quarter. Yeah. You know, the, the turnover is uncharacteristic of them. And I guess you, you feel uh, kind of bad for them. But, you know, a lot of people would say, you know, four titles in a row. It's hard to, to find any uh, sympathy for them. But, you know, a typical great football season out of the top teams in the MAC. Uh, and, uh, you know, I also Wapakoneta keeps their winning going with Coach Travis Moyer, although they lose in the regional final again. But uh, th those are the ones that stick out. But to me, in Lima Senior, their, their last game of the season at Toledo Central Catholic is one that I'll always remember because the Spartans really let one get away and they had a chance for a signature victory and, and they couldn't come up with it. Uh, they did somewhat redeem themselves by winning a playoff game then, but I think that one's one that'll always stick with them as one that they woulda, coulda, shoulda. 
along those same lines, Todd, I was thinking Lima Senior as well, and just taking that step. They took that extra step from last year, making it to another round in the playoffs. Granted, yeah. they lost to the team that became the state champions at Cincinnati LaSalle in uh, Division Two. And if you remember at the beginning of the season, Lima Senior was going north. Right. They weren't going south. So things got changed up there a little bit. Now, who's to say that they would have had that much luck because they would have run into Perrysburg and really tough teams up north as well. But, you know, just to see the Spartan program take that one step. Now, they're going to lose a lot next year. They do return several guys up front on the offensive line. But can they replace the guys they lose? Obviously, the skill position players and the receivers and Rico Flowers and uh, Rico, Ruben Flowers, Rico Stafford. Um, as well as Darius Gordon. Darius Gordon, the quarterback, a two-year starter as well. But they do return Jaden Walker as a back as well. He'll remain to be seen what you know how far the Spartans can go next year can they make a regional final can they put the pieces in place to once again contend for the track title I'm going to look back at 2015 and, and remember the Spartans renaissance continuing building off of that tough loss to, to finish off the regular season and picking up that first playoff victory since the state championship in 96 I'm going to remember the renaissance we saw at St. Mary's with Doug Fry coming back home second year back at St. Mary's but making the Rough Riders more than just a competent team but a competitive team as, as we saw the Western Buckeye League get very interesting. Yes, Wapakoneta rolled over that league, but every single night in that league was uh, great games. And I think also the 2015 season is going to be remembered for the Bath Wildcats as coming up just, just, just short of a playoff berth on what, what was it, the fourth tiebreaker they had to go to the on third that? third level, yeah. Well, that'll be motivation for Bath come next year and looking forward to see what they're able to build on that. And yeah, all good memories from 2015. I'm upset football season's over. Always love it. College football now and a couple new hires up north in the northern part of the state, Toledo and Bowling Green. Are these good hires for the football programs? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, they think I, they are right now, right? Sure, you know, Toledo went with uh, what is a, a thing that's been tried many times, promote the coordinator. Uh, the players love him, this kind of thing. and. You know, that, that has mixed results. I, I'm always leery of, oh, the players love this guy, let's promote him, because usually uh, what happens is uh, they aren't maybe ready to be a head coach because the players love him. That's always a sign that maybe they're not as good at disciplining the team. Bowling Green did that, you'll recall, when Urban Meyer left. The players really lobbied for Greg Brandon, and they had a lot of success his first two years, and then things didn't go as well. So. Uh, Jason Candle, we'll see how he does at Toledo. As far as Bowling Green, Mike Jinks, a name that came out of nowhere, has no connection to Ohio, to Bowling Green, to the MAC, to anything around here. He's purely Texas guy, but he's coming from Texas Tech and their so-called air raid offense. And, of course, Bowling Green's been running the, the Baylor-type offense under Dino Babers. So, apparently, Mike Jinks really wowed AD Chris Kingston with his interview and his uh, vision, his approach. So we'll see how it turns out, but uh, let's face it. Do we know if they're great hires? We sure, certainly don't, not yet. Well, but the interesting thing about Jenks is just four years ago, he was a high school high head school, coach yeah. at, in San Antonio, a very successful high school head coach. I believe he's now the 11th college football head coach that was a head coach at a Texas high school. So that tells you a little bit something about the importance of Texas high school football. Certainly, you've got to assume with those types of ties, he's going to try and recruit Texas and bring right. some of those Texas guys up to northwest Ohio, and they'll go from the oil fields to the corn fields. Maybe. Well, well I was going to mention the high school connection with Jenks where, you know, as you said, you know, four years ago he's coaching high school ball, you know, gets on the staff with, Clint, with uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Now we'll go to – and I think that, that Texas could be a hotbed for Bowling Green – to go sure. into recruit. They do a good job of getting guys to come from Florida, Todd, as you well right. know. But just to add Florida, Texas to that mix, you know, try to maintain this MAC championship level status. And, you know, whether it's a stepping stone or not for Mike Jinks remains to be seen. But, you know, all season long, ever since the Tim Beckman debacle at Illinois, the talk was Dino Babers is going to be somewhere. So it, it's kind of played in the back of the minds, I would think, of the players. I know you and I have talked about it, Todd, several occasions. So they knew that this was coming. But to go turn around, make the hire as quickly as they did, you know, and I mean, I'm sure that Jenks has some stellar credentials too to get this, you know, opportunity to not just coach any MAC team, but to coach the champs of the MAC. I'm interested to see how things go with him. Jason Candle, like you said, you know, the whole coordinator bringing him back from Iowa State, where he went for about 40 hours or so, and now getting the opportunity to come back to Toledo and uh, be the head coach of the Rockets. He's got to put a staff together and 
Right now, he's reaching to the D2 and D3 levels. He took the Heidelberg head football yeah. coach. He took the running backs coach from Ohio Dominican, which is Division II program. And he's, you know, gone to those routes. He's reaching back to his roots as a D3 player at Mount Union to pull guys to come up to the D1 level to be coaches. It's interesting that both BG and Toledo hired younger coaches to be the head coach, which a lot of people are going to see that as being they're once again going to get a stepping stone, a guy who's going to be there two, three years and bounce to a bigger program. I, you know, I don't know if we'll ever see another Doit Perry that's going to stick around Bowling Green for a long time, Todd. But as we've talked about, Ohio seemed to found a guy, Frank Solich, who is, a, who is willing to stick around Athens for the long term. Why can't Bowling Green do that? Is it simply a dollars and cents thing? Well, I think, you know, Ohio really caught lightning in a bottle. You don't find many uh, coaches as accomplished as Frank Solich in the situation he was in when they hired him. He was uh, relatively late in the game as far as his age for uh, the career advancement. He had been a successful coach that was looking for a job like Ohio, was willing to put in that time and stay there and build the program, and they were willing to give him that time. Uh, that, those are a lot of things coming together. That, that's hard to find. I think teams like Bowling Green and Toledo would love to find somebody like that, but this time around maybe they didn't think somebody was there or maybe the ADs just weren't in that frame of mind at this time. But, you know, it, it, it's a rarity, and Frank Solich has done well at Ohio, and they did well to get him. We will hear from Coach Jenks on Thursday's sports report. Staying in college football, Ohio State Notre Dame will play each other in the Fiesta Bowl. Based on the results Saturday, there wasn't really any surprises for the playoff. But is this the best non-playoff bowl game, or will this be a blowout one way or the other? I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, how can you not like two premier programs getting together in a bowl game? Because it's 1 o'clock on New Year's Day, and there's a bunch of uh, other bowl games at the same time. It's going to get lost in all the shuffle, and Notre Dame's a mid-major program. They're not special anymore. That's what we're hearing. I don't think it's true, but that's what we're hearing. Who? What kind of idiot is saying that? I won't name names. Well, you can name names afterward. This is <laughs> yeah. a premier matchup. Notre Dame is well, What has right Notre Dame done in the, the last 10 years? What has Notre Dame done in the last 20 yeah. years outside of getting blown up by Alabama in the BCS championship game in 2012, 2013? They're still in the upper echelon of college football, and they're a name, and it's a great matchup for the Buckeyes. I know a lot of Buckeye fans are upset they're not in the Rose Bowl. Yes. The bottom line is... Iowa State had them in the standings, and the Rose Bowl had said they would take the highest-rated team, and it ended up being Iowa. You know, the Buckeyes don't have anything to complain about. They had their chances. They got the benefit of the doubt for nine weeks when they played like crap, and they stayed in the top four, even the top one, for a long time. So take the Notre Dame game for what it is, a great matchup and a great bowl game, and enjoy it. It's going to get ratings. Oh, I absolutely. Truly, I will well, get ready. If, if Full I remember, television and no radio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I remember the statistic correctly, Notre Dame and Ohio State have combined for 124 more wins than any other bowl matchup this season. There you so go. So, obviously, you're talking about the, you know, two of the top seven all-time winningest college football programs going head-to-head. -head. And I think you know, a lot of people like to throw on Notre Dame, and I'm no huge Irish fan, but Brian Kelly's got them up there where they're, you know, if he can stay there and keep doing what he's doing, they're going to break through and be among the upper echelon. You look at their games this year, they almost beat Clemson, and, and they were perilously close to beating yep. Clemson. Mm -hmm. And their game of Stanford was an absolute brawl. I watched that game. That was high-level football. And let's also remember Notre Dame's on their backup quarterback, kind of like Ohio State was at the end of last year, although they've had it for most of the season. So Since game one. Anybody that's yeah. going to run on Notre Dame and think the Buckeyes are going to walk over them, I think you got another thing coming. Well, Notre Dame's backup quarterback, Deshaun Kaiser from, from Toledo. Toledo Central Catholic. Yeah. Grew up a Michigan fan, supposedly was upset that he never got a committable offer from Ohio State. We know how well Ohio quarterbacks tend to do against the Buckeyes, particularly in bowl games. So that's another subplot to this Fiesta Bowl matchup. I, I can't wait for this matchup. I'm excited for it. It's two heavyweights of the college football world that are going to throw down on each other. It might be like the Rumble in the Jungle with Ali and Foreman. They might go 15 rounds. They may have to go overtime in this. Who knows? It's going to be a great football game, and I cannot wait to watch it. And depending upon which homers you want to listen to, you can either listen to it on 93.1 The Fan <laughs> or on 1150 WIMA. That's good. I like homers. Yeah. The fan bases are excited, too. I think no this pun intended is the there. Matchup. Yeah. <laughs> the fan bases, yeah. Nice. So this should be fun. All right, let's close yeah. quickly with the NFL. Johnny Manziel, the Browns starting quarterback, this week Whoa, I again. thought we were talking NFL. <laughs> we are. We're no. not talking the circus clowns, right? No. So is the Browns 2016 starting quarterback currently on their roster? No. 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 So after all of that, well, doesn't and matter. And the thing is, I don't think there's a franchise quarterback 
coming out for college yeah, football anyways. Not. But the Browns need more than just a quarterback. I, I really think they need a – yeah, we don't have enough time. To get <laughs> we don't have time, do we? No. Okay, no. so no is the answer. No. All right, thanks, guys. That does it for this week's Press Row. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next week.